Yeah, this one is, uh, this came from a self-imposed writing assignment, and, which was create a female character and take her on uh, a special journey. It's called She Rolls. <laughs> Stumbled there from the car The grass had just fell right It was that sweet Virginia sigh It was a beautiful night She thought she saw God But it was a state trooper with a flashlight That was shining right in her eyes She kissed that cop right on his lips Took him right by surprise She got a hand on his taser She dropped him to the ground It did not even phase her to kiss him when he's down That's just how she rolls She rolls all the time She's hot like burning coal Chasing shine with a wine She knows that you know that she don't care She dances on the stage in her underwear She is teasing my soul That's just how she rolls She jumped in that cop car She turned on the flashy lights She revved that American engine And then peeled away out of sight She thought it was too easy So she let the siren blast She cranked down the window But sang with the siren Let the wind blow back her Woo, woo Just right then she realized There was a German shepherd in the back she pulled right through the drive through bought that bitch a Big Mac, named that sweet dog Stella, BFFs to this very day. And if that dog could talk, well, this is what she'd say. That's just how she rolls. She rolled all the time. She's hot like burn coal, chasing shy with a wine. She knows that you know that she don't care Dances round the store in her underwear She is shoplifting my soul That's just how she rolls She threw a brick on the gas pedal She was steering with her feet Half of her body hanging out of the window Doing 90 down the side street She had one foot on the wheel She had one foot cranking the tube Noodle dancing with her hands She was as crazy as a dozen loons Well, she quotes Ricky Bobby She says, if you ain't first, you last She don't care just what you do As long as you do it fast She wrote that road to the road Run out and the whole time having a blast She and Stella would have died that night If they had not run out of gas Just how she rolls She rolls all the time She's hot like burning coal Chasing shine with a wine She knows that she knows that she don't care Dances round DMV in her underwear She's waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting That's just how she rolls She rolls all the time She's hot like burning coal Chasing shine with a wine she knows that she knows that she don't care Dances around church in her underwear She's praying on my soul That's just how she rose I was uh, curious to know about vape. Was there uh, any larger concept there uh, when you put together the, the song selection for that? Yeah, the the idea uh, was based off the acronym V A period P period E period, Virginia psychedelic excursion. So it was recordings uh, uh, in Virginia, like many of my records, 
Every time we went in, uh, there was creating, there was, there was plumes of bliss. I've seen you describe it as a high-pressured life shot through your songs in a low-pressure environment. Was that just some uh, clever copy, or is there something more to that? There is something more to that. Out of that comes a highly concentrated music that can be inhaled through your ears. I see, yes. Um, I noticed one of the songs on there is called Donuts. Yes. And it's about donuts. Yes. Um, but it, it reminded me of a lot of your songs where you know the lyrics... It's not so much about the content of the lyrics, but sort of more the cadence, right? And and just the sound of the words more than the meaning. Is that something that you think about when you're writing songs? My music is very uh, revolved around rhythm, and uh, even if it's just me by myself with a guitar, I'm I'm definitely leaning toward a backbeat, and there's always some kind of you know rhythm going on. So absolutely, uh, it comes across in my lyrics as well. Fitting them all in is one thing, and 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 figuring out how to do that, uh, it just turns out very rhythmic. Uh, but let's let's get one thing straight. I love donuts. <laughs> it's very very important, and and uh, but but that song came from uh, um, an idea of my friend Neil Glancy, who owns Paul's Bakery in Fredericksburg, Virginia, wanted to create this program to where uh, local musicians would write a song about the bakery. Uh, they can be downloaded for a certain fee, and then uh, you can have it on, have that song on your, your your phone, and bring it into the bakery and play that song, and you get a free donut. There's a book out by a, a business writer and marketing guru called Seth Godin, called Lynchpin, mm -hmm. and you are you have a, a little feature in there, and uh, he talks about the generosity of Keller and. You know, the idea behind the book is that, you know, if you're a linchpin in business, that means you're indispensable, and that's, you know, the road to success. Seth Godin is, 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 an, is an amazing uh, mind, and um, I, I get his blog, and, and, and the best things about his blog is that it, 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 they're so short, you know, and you can really get a lot out of it. And even though it's about, you know, business and marketing and the philosophies behind that, you can put that towards other, other uh, elements in life, like in, in my business. You know, it's very different from the types of businesses that's he, that he's talking to. But I think what he grabbed onto is the fact that I am, you know, a, a music lover first, musician second, songwriter third. You know, and I often put my place in the, uh, put myself in the place of an audience member. And what would I want to hear if I was listening to music in a bar, you know, which is 90% of the venues that I play. Uh, I got to meet him up, uh, up, in, up in New York, just north of New York City, and, and he's a very uh, gentle, kind soul. And I've... Well, I think one of the points he was, he was sort of hitting on in that section was you know, you're, you're offering fans an experience that can't be replicated. And is that something that goes into uh, part of your thought process before each show, doing something unique, or do you pretty much have it dialed in at this point? And when I play solo, there's so many songs to to choose from, and um, we keep track of the set lists. And I often <clears throat> go back and view the set list from the time that I was there before, and you know, go process of elimination and create a set of, with none of those songs that I played the last time. Was, was there a particular guitarist or musician that really inspired you in the beginning that, and made you think that you wanted to do this for a living? Uh, there were definitely some key figures uh, that, um, that I honed in on. But I guess in the beginning, it was just more of the concept of the guy sitting on a stool in the corner of a restaurant or a bar. Not necessarily people paying attention to him, but more background music. But then Michael Hedges uh, really turned my whole world around, um, not only rhythmically, stylistically, tuning, uh, but also the way he was able to take a cover song and uh, stay true to you know the song and the lyrics, but yet make it his own, whether it be in a different key or tuning or uh, I really got a lot from him, and Michael Hedges, I would say, is definitely a, one of my main influences, for sure. 
how, how would you say Jerry Garcia uh, impacted how you develop your style? I discovered uh, Jerry Garcia and Bob Weir, and just the two of uh, two of them playing together. The the, the r- rhythmic style of Bob Weir is is unlike anybody else. It's like a a jazz piano player. He's doing different voicings, and his rhythm is uh, really complements Jerry's playing, and that's something that I, I I picked on you know as a teenager, and and then getting into that. Uh, that music diving into the uh, acoustic side first is 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 what did it for me. I think it was the record uh, Reckoning, which is one of the acoustic mm-hmm. sets. Uh, I think in the early '80s, mm-hmm. and um, I was just you know I was playing acoustic music, and and uh, I really picked up on that first, and and then I started going to the shows, and then that whole element uh, of that utopian. Uh, family society that surrounds the band you know uh, half of which had no even you know premonition of going into the show they were you know in the in the lots and as a teenager you know it just started as the music for me but then there was this whole other world that uh, that really uh, turned me on and opened my mind and once my mind was open is when uh, Hedges came in and so I was able to absorb
empty for two The sky was a yellow and the sun was blue Strangers stopping strangers just to shake their hands Everybody's playing in the heart of gold band, heart of gold band actually had uh, Martin Sexton in not that long ago mm -hmm. and we talked a lot about his right hand technique and how it was largely developed through necessity because he's used to playing solo mm -hmm. and he needs to basically provide his own rhythm section mm -hmm. and I think there's a little similarity with your right hand is that something that came naturally to you or is that is that something you had to work on specifically that was me as a solo act not wanting to just be strumming like this and to create more of a backbeat I focused on the bass line first and kind of that was the main focus uh, of the song and then everything else kind of came around it and I think it's very common in, in solo playing. Was there ever a moment where you either figured out either a playing technique or even a mindset or approach that really propelled your you're playing forward the entrance of the bass onto my stage you know it was always just acoustic guitar and a microphone and maybe a djembe and then once I started looping you know I would just be doing loops uh, with the guitar but then once I started to add the actual bass into the actual loop uh, the air started to move, people started to feel it, and then the groove started to happen, and then that was a, that was a turning point, and that was probably 1999 or 2000, I think, is, is when that happened. You know, how did it change your guitar playing? It was more of, of focusing on those lines and, and, and digging in to those, those low bass tones and, and playing everything around it. You know, I think it was just uh, accentuated what was, what was going on. Let's talk about this... Uh, guitar, it's an HD 28. Well, this uh, I believe came f straight from the factory uh, in 2000, and um, it's had uh, you know its fair share of, of, of wounds. Uh, this one is, has been cracked open twice. You know, I lost some lost some hair and bone down yeah. here, lost some trim up here, but it's all pretty tight now and. And uh, this thing right here is a, uh, a, a bracket for a f uh, Fishman triple play uh, synthesizer pickup. Is it true you have another HD28 also? I do, yeah. I sent this one back to the factory to be refretted, and they sent me uh, a, um, a loaner. Mm -hmm. And I ended up buying that one and doing all kinds of weird experiments to it, like just, you know, different pickup settings and, you know, like a John Pierce on the inside and then an electric pickup right here and, and you know, a Roland synthesizer pickup. And it had like, you know, it has, it's still, it's still alive. It has uh, f four uh, outputs on the, oh. on the out, you know. And I have another one made by, uh, by Dan Becker mm -hmm. and Ryan Martian. Uh, from uh, Becker Guitars and Martian Basses. And this is the retro acoustic. And it's shaped like, like their, their, their electric guitar shapes. And I think it's a, it was a solid block that was routed out. Mm -hmm. And so it's a big, it's a big, it's a sturdy, a sturdy guitar, but really tiny uh, package that uh, feels really, really good in, in my hands. and. You know, it's it's a thin body, so it definitely even plugged in. It has that thin body tone, but um, you know, I, I I pretty much been taking that one with me everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, there's another uh, Martin uh, cutaway that uh, I have uh, that I've been exp uh, one of my experimental guitars, 
quick story. I, I, I did this uh, uh, trade show for Martin Guitar. They, uh, the, they teamed up with Burton Snowboards mm-hmm. and uh, created a, a snowboard for, for Danny Davis, who was uh, in the Olympics. And the idea was that the snowboard goes up into the air and you catch the big air and, the, and um, you see the bottom of, of, of the snowboard. And on the bottom of the snowboard was this you know, Martin Guitar neck. <laughs> and it said Martin. It was just like in the, a combination of companies. It's the love of uh, Martin. Yeah, the, the, I think it was the vice president of Martin Guitars has the love for, for surfing and for snowboarding and created this this thing. And, and so here I am, a avid snowboarder, love Burton. Uh, and uh, somehow my name uh, got brought up and they, they brought me to Denver for this trade show and I played like 40 minutes on a couple Martin guitars and uh, in, in like the Burton booth you know with all these um, snowboards and and, mm-hmm. and, and and helmets and and so in return I uh, got the equivalent of an HD 28 that was that would that was gonna be my pay and I was like I was so on it you right know? Uh, and so instead of getting one I've got I got two guitars uh, for the same price you know so the, for the same price of what this cost I, I, I was able to to get uh, two different uh, Martin guitars and one of them was the uh, the newer uh, cutaway and I had a buddy saw it in half and uh, put a back on it and it's this awesome Martin thin body guitar, and it sounds it sounds fantastic, and uh, um, I just love playing that thing. So this song is called "The Drop." I made this one up with my wife as we sat on the beach in Virginia, drinking out of our water bottles and watching our children play in the sand. <laughs> Drive. 